I want you to recall back to when we did trigonometric relationships and we said, look, sine and cosine, they're related. They're complements. In fact, you can see the whole shifting over 90 degrees business on the graph, right? And we also said that tan x is related to both of these guys as well. What's the relationship between, can you see that? Yeah, you can adjust. Tan x and these two other ratios. What was the relationship? Can you remember? Something over something. Tan x, yeah, Ivan. Sine over cos, very good. I'm, I'm using colors, so I'm going to try and be consistent. I've got sine on the top, and I've got cos on the bottom. And I just realized that my pink and red look very similar to you, so I might try something else. Let's try this. Okay, so does that look a little better? Can you see the difference more clearly? Is that better? Yeah? Okay, so you've got it in black. Now here's what we're going to do. We are going to graph this guy. That's why you have graph paper in front of you, okay? Now, we could graph this just the same way we graphed sine. I could give you all some values, you can chuck it in your calculators, we can come out the front and we can plot points, okay? In a work, we can get a graph, okay? However, there's a better way to do this. Here's how I would liken things. Um, plotting points to graph something um, is a little bit like coming to a locked door. Coming to a locked door and you're like, I I'm trying to open this door. How shall I do it, okay? Plotting points and just, you know, machining up the points and requiring 30 people to do it. That's kind of the mathematical equivalent of taking a sledgehammer and knocking down the door by brute force, okay? It takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of punching numbers, but it works, okay? A sledgehammer, if you're strong enough, it'll open the door, okay? But doesn't require much finesse or elegance. It's not a very clever solution, okay? It just happens to work because you overwhelmed it with, you know, time and effort, okay? A better way to do this, and this is why we have graph paper, is to think about how sine and cosine relate and come together to make tan, okay? This is kind of like mathematical equivalent rather than knocking the door down <coughs> with a sledgehammer. It's kind of like learning to pick locks, okay? Now, I don't know if any of you know how to pick locks. I've tried to learn. I can pick a very, 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 very basic lock, okay? Basically a lock that wouldn't be any good for actually locking something up, but I can still pick it, okay? And it took me weeks to learn that. Learning to pick locks is hard, especially if you're uncoordinated like I am. But it's a far more thoughtful and clever way of doing things and also doesn't require you to be strong enough to use a sledgehammer like I am to open a door, okay? So this is going to be a bit harder than just chucking values into your calculator, okay? But it's going to require more thought and it's gonna get you a better understanding of what's going on. So let's have a go at this. You can see um, the computers provide us which are with a whole bunch of um, values for those angles along the x-axis. Can you see that? Okay. But they're not kind of the, um, they're in increments of 50. Can you see that? I've got 50, 100, 150, etc. Okay, which for trigonometric graphs is not actually that useful. Okay, so for instance, we're going to mark some of these extra angles in that are important to us together. Let's have a look here. Can you see the first time, the pink graph, that's, um, that's cos. Can you see the first time that cos intersects with the x-axis, right? What value is that? Just read it off. It's 90 degrees, right? So I can put in a 90 there. I'm going to skip the degrees because I'm just trying to wipe these as small as I can. Okay. That's the first time that cos hits the x-axis. You can also see sine hits the x-axis over here, but it hits again right in the middle. What's that? That's 180, isn't it? You can read off the lines, right? Uh, cosine goes down and then it comes back up. It hits the x-axis again, right? And you can see it's 1, 2 squares after 250, so that makes it 270. Very good, okay? Um, and then right at the very end, you can see I finish, both of my graphs, in fact, they finish at 360. Now remember, back to last week, the graphs don't really finish, okay? They don't really stop like that. They keep on going forever. But I just drawn these sections for you so that you can see the pattern and the patterns that you get here. Remember the graphs repeat. We had a name for that. Start to P, remember? When graphs repeat, they do the same thing over and over and over again. With regular switch. frequency. It, we call that periodic, right? There's a period to it, okay? So the period of both of these graphs is 360 degrees. If I were to keep on going, this pink graph, right? To do another one of these, I would just keep on going over here. And it would be the same shape, just copied again. Okay? And of course it goes in this direction as well to the left. Now, 
tan x is the green graph divided by the pink graph. The green graph divided by the pink graph. <coughs> okay? So even though I'm not going to use a calculator once for this entire exercise, okay, I can still know there are lots of points here where I know what's going on. For instance, remember how we just labeled a few extra values on that x-axis, right? Um, here, 0, 180, 360. We call those the intercepts of the sine curve. Okay, They're where it intercepts with the x-axis. Now, I'm doing green divided by pink. See that? Green divided by pink. At this point down here, the green is 0. You see that? Now, if you've got 0 on the numerator of your fraction, I don't care what the denominator is, right? You can have 0 over 1, 0 over 100, 0 over a rock melon. You're still going to get 0. Okay, so therefore, tan is zero over something. The tan graph will be zero at that point. You see that? Tan has to be zero over there. It just so happens that it's going to be zero over one, which is zero. But it doesn't matter what it's over. It's zero. I have the same kind of thing happening over here in the middle. You see that? The green is zero, and the pink is, what's that down the bottom? It's going to be minus one, right? Negative one. 0 over, I don't care what it's equal to, will also be 0. So you can see these crosses that I'm putting. I'm trying to plot the path of the tan curve. Okay, This is where the tan curve is going to go through. Okay, I've done those two intercepts, 0, 180. There's one more point where I know the tan curve will be 0. Where is it? Over there at 360. You see that? It's going to be 0 divided by 1 all over again because I've gone all the way back to the start. So, I'm going to put an X there. Okay. Now, that's all right, but that's hardly enough to graph the whole thing, right? You guys put like 30 points onto the board before we drew just a small section of sign. So, let's have a look. There are some other interesting points here. Can you see right here, right? That's where green and pink are equal to each other. Sine and cosine have the same value. Now, there are two ways that you can know what this is. You can just look. You've got a graph. You've got... A scale there you can see what that angle is right look it's halfway between 40 and 50 it's 45 degrees isn't it but you knew that already didn't you because remember sine 45 right because cosine is the complement right what's the complement of 45? 45 also 45 right so sine 45 and cos 45 are both equal they're both as we just saw we're, they're both one on root two Okay? If you think back a few more lessons, that was roughly 0.7. Have a look at your graph. Have a look at your graph. Do you see where it lives? There's 1, right, on the axis, right? 1, 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7. It's pretty much bang on. Okay? So tell me, being that tan is sine over cosine, it's uh, green over pink. When sine and cosine are the same, what's sine divided by cosine? It's one, right? Whatever values these are, if they're the same when you divide them, green over, sorry, green over pink, something over itself is just one. Okay? So at 45 degrees, the tan curve right above here will be equal to one. Do you see that? You see where I got one from? One is over there on the left hand side, right? So a value, green divided by pink, which is the same, is one. Okay, this is good. This is good. Um, I can see some other points that are similar to this, right? For example, if you have a ruler there, if you don't, you can borrow one. Okay. If you have a ruler, I want you to have a look over to, see how that was 45 degrees? 45 degrees in there. 45 degrees. 45 was exactly halfway between 0 and 90. Do you see that? Exactly halfway. And in fact, if I cover up the rest of this, you can see, look, it's kind of, well, it's not kind of, it's exactly symmetrical. So that's why it's bang in the middle. But if I just cover up a different part of the graph, see this part here? This is between 90 and 180. Right? Can you see you have another kind of symmetry, right? This one starts at, on the left-hand side, I'm running out of hands. You start at 1, you come down to 0. Right? Whereas the pink graph starts at 0 and goes down to negative 1. So they're kind of doing opposite things. So therefore, if you're halfway between here and you get the same value, if I go halfway between 90 and 180, what is that? What's halfway between 90 and 180? You can literally measure it out. What's that value there? 
Remember, it's 45 degrees over here. So if I go 45 more, and I go 45 more, it should be 135, right? 135. All right, rule the, the ready. I want you to have a look. I want you to measure how high the green graph is, and then measure how low the pink graph is. You have a look. On mine, I look like I'm getting something like 21 millimeters up to the green graph. 21 millimeters up to the green. And if I move my ruler down, it looks to me like I go 21 millimeters down to the pink. Do you see that? 21 millimeters. In other words, it's the same distance. It's just that one's positive and one's negative. Do you understand? So if I take some number, I don't know what the number is, but it doesn't matter. If I take some number, and then I divide it by the same number but negative. Okay? Regardless of what the number is, you're always going to get the same answer, namely negative, negative one. Okay? Remember how over here on 45 degrees we got positive one. Well, down here, I'm going to get, where's negative one going to be? There. There he is. You see I've read negative one off the left hand side of the graph. Okay? So I've got some values happening here. Okay. Let's keep on going from left to right. Look, see how at 45 degrees, the two graphs were exactly the same. There's another point where that happens. Can you see where that happens? It's here, halfway between 180 and 270. Are you starting to get a pattern yet? Right? What is the actual angle halfway between 180 and 270? It's going to be 225, isn't it? I keep going forward in 45 degree chunks. <coughs> 225. And look. Sine and cosine, green and pink, they're exactly equal to each other. What did we conclude when you take two numbers that are the same and you divide them? You just get one, right? Even if they're both negative, well, the negatives cancel each other, right? So 225, I should be at one. Okay? Hmm. How are we going so far? We've traced out a whole bunch of points so far, but it's still not enough for me to connect things, okay? So... I'm going to stop for a second and come back to earlier on here in the graph. Earlier on here in the graph. Right? 